Hello friends, Amy R. here with Prairie Paper and Ink with a couple more slimline cards. This time using this new background stamp from Simon Says Stamps Born to Sparkle release. This is the Party Balloons background stamp and it's quite large. It's larger than a standard background stamp that it's normally six by six. This one's roughly six by not quite eight inches. So I was like, hmm, I can probably get two slimline card fronts out of this. So I cut down some black cardstock and then I took the foam insert out of my Misty because this is a red rubber stamp on cling foam. And then I have my black cardstock in my Misty. I am using my anti-static powder tool very heavily across all of this since I'm going to stamp this entire image with clear embossing ink and then inked up the stamp with the clear embossing ink. I'm going to stamp it onto this cardstock and I'm going to coat this with uh, white embossing powder. And I started with just using my tray and then I pulled out some copy paper because when I'm embossing really large images or like a large piece like this, so much easier because <laughs> otherwise I'm dumping embossing powder literally everywhere. So this way, copy paper catches the embossing powder. I can funnel it right back in the container. Good to go. So once I've got the image coated with the embossing powder, I am going to melt this with my heat tool, make sure everything is smooth and melted. And then I pulled out, not even pulled out, they were literally sitting right in front of me because I hadn't put them away. Plus I'm not gonna put them away. I'm gonna keep using them. These are the Kiritake uh, Opal watercolors. I just posted a video this week using them with the beautiful flowers, my old, oldie but goodie favorite set. And I did uh, these swatches in that previous video. And this one gave me the opportunity. I was like, ooh, if I do these balloons, I can use every single color in the palette, which is exactly what I did. So just like the last cards I did using these, I am just working on black cardstock, not watercolor paper. With one like this, you could totally do black watercolor paper if you have it, because it's just a larger image, but I'm not, I'm still not using a lot of water. So I'm not worried about like pilling or anything. This does warp a bit just because I'm doing so much, but the cardstock itself is fine. I've never used black watercolor paper. I have a bit. Um, I picked some up forever ago and then um, one of my viewers had sent me a few pieces and I've been hoarding it like I do. But anyway, <laughs> I with things like this, I just don't, I don't bother. But you could totally, if you, again, if you've got it, great. But I have no problem using just good black cardstock and then just painting. And that's all I'm doing. And with these especially, it's so fun because like in the palette there, you can see it. Like everything's just kind of white and boring. But the minute you paint it on the black or just dark, because this would work on any dark cardstock. You'll get different looks depending on, you know, the base color. But any dark cardstock would work for this. And this is all I did. I've sped this up in editing, but I just sat and just filled in each balloon. No rhyme or reason. I just wanted to make sure to use every single color because why not? You know, it's just fun. And these balloons can be any color. So I was just using my little cheapo uh, Nouveau paint brushes. You can get a pack of these from Simon for, I'm not even sure how much. It's, they're cheap. I use them for everything. They're great. So just use those. I have a little water cup off the side. I would just, you know, clean my brush off between colors and then just fill in everything. And since everything was heat embossed, it just makes life easier. The heat embossing kind of resists the metallic watercolors. So it just makes life so much easier. And like with everything, you know, um, I'm not worried about the brush strokes with this kind of stuff either. Again, if you worked on like actual watercolor paper and used a little more water, you could probably get it smoother if that's really your thing, but I, I don't worry about it. They're pretty and they're shimmery and they're, you know, reflective. So I, I just, I'm not worried about it. Plus I'm going to add a bunch of splatter because I just, I was like, these, this is one of the times where you can just go wild. Like they're metallic and shimmery and birthday balloons. It's like, let's just go all out. So I am using just some white gouache and some Perfect Pearl powder. I could have actually just used that same opal palette and done splatter with that, but decided to go with my, just my standbys, my, my go-tos when it comes to splatter. So I started with the Perfect Pearls 
Just put a little bit of, of um, water on my palette, mixed in the Perfect Pearl Powder, splattered that all over this background. And then with the white gouache, I just water it down a little bit. I've also used um, Distress Picket, Picket Fence Paint. I've used that a lot for white splatter as well. Whatever floats your boat. I, I, I jump between the two. I just, I go through phases with it. Um, Amsterdam Liquid White is another good one that I have shown in a ton of videos. So again, okay, it just, I just jump around with when it comes to white splatter, but those are some good options. So I splattered everything, set it aside. My die cutting is the CZ Design Let's Party Wafer Die. This came out a while ago and I die cut the words from Simon's white cardstock and I had stacked two layers together. And then the top layer I die cut from one of Simon's holographic cardstocks that it's just Again, it's a birthday card. All of the shimmer, let's do the reflectiveness. Plus I have I have been hoarding Simon's holographic cardstock since I got them. <laughs> I've barely used them. I just they're they're just they're pretty I pull them out and I pet them and then I put them away again. I don't know. But I made myself cut into it because they're just fun. So the top layer was the holographic. The outline I die cut from Simon's Island Blue cardstock. And then I'm going to adhere those on top of the outline. So once I've got those, um, once I have those completely adhered, I'm going to, the splatter, everything is dry on the card front. So I'm going to cut it in half. And I was right. I was able to get two card fronts. It was just shy of the size I wanted it to be. Since I'm doing slimline cards, I wanted these panels to be three inches by eight inches. And on this one piece, it was just slightly shy of that size. Like the image didn't go all the way to the edge, which depending on what you're doing, it wouldn't really matter. But with this, because it was on the black cardstock, it was kind of obvious. So all I did was I just grabbed those watercolors again and just kind of eyeballed and filled in those balloons up to the edge. And there was only like three balloons that I had to do that with. So just kind of painted up to the edge. And then I am going to just continue the embossed lines with just a white gel pen. It was simple. Again, didn't take very long. I just followed the lines of the stamped image and just those little like few millimeters there right up to the very edge just to clean that up. Um, depending on the type of, you know, coloring, that sort of thing, like I said, you might not even notice it. Or you could add like a frame die or some embellishments. I've shown that in a lot of videos too you know, in places where you make a mistake or a smear or something, or if the image isn't finished, stick on a little crystal or whatever. <laughs> you won't even know. So anywho, card base was more heavyweight white cardstock that I cut to seven inches. So they're seven by eight and a half inch size pieces. And then I'll score it at three and a half. So these will be three and a half by eight and a half inch slimline cards. For me, that's the size I do. You could totally do four by nine slimline cards. Those fit nicely in slimline envelopes. Um, the only reason I don't is this is just easier. <laughs> it's just one cut, one score, card base done. That's why I do this size. It's just so much easier. And then I am left with those other pieces that I've shown in recent videos that I'll use for die cutting. Like that's actually what I did with the sentiments. I just use those pieces for die cutting and other things on cards. So anywho, my card bases were scored. On the inside of the cards, I'm going to use this new confetti stencil and some oxide inks. I just picked some inks simil somewhat similar, obviously brighter than the watercolors I used on the front. And I was going to use just my blending foams that I use with all my oxides. And I was like, oh, I'll just kind of do like sort of a gradient, whatever. And then I remembered this release. Um, Simon's got in these fabulous little... Um, blender brushes like the ones that fit on your finger and they're rainbow colored and they're so cute. I'm not even kidding. I, I like when I opened the package from them and I saw this like it was just you know in its box and I was like what on earth and I opened it up and I like like a kid I was so excited. These remind me of those little pencils. Does anyone remember those like way back in the day? I used to have a set of them. I coveted them so bad because I had classmates that had them when I was in elementary school. And then my parents finally got me a set and they were like fruit scented. And they had those little white pieces, you know, with the leads in them and you could pull them out and push them in the bottom and all that sort of a thing. And I would sit and play with them all the time. And you know, you wouldn't, you could never lose any of those pieces because they would make the entire pencil completely useless. So 
That's what these reminded me of. Anyway, anyway, I used those little blenders and they have their brushes. They're not foams because like we've had those, you know, finger foam daubers since like the beginning of card making. These have the little brushes, so they're fabulous. I kind of might actually have to get a couple more sets of them because I, I love them. So I did quick and simple blending with them. I like the size because I could do the little confetti in different colors. And then just like I do with my regular blending brushes, I just rub them on a microfiber cloth. I do not wash my brushes like almost never. There's just no point and I also have a ton of them. So I keep them for different color families, but that's all I do. I don't bother washing them. I just rub them really well in a microfiber cloth until no more color comes out and they're good. And then these I just stacked back together and I'm probably going to set them somewhere so I can look at them all the time because they're cute. But anywho, <laughs> that was the confetti stencil on the inside. And then I had to add, of course, a couple sentiments. So I pulled out the CZ Design Stop Drop Party stamp set and a couple sentiments from it. And I'm just, I folded my card base inside out, stuck it in my Misty, lined up the sentiments, made sure they were straight. And then I stamped them onto the insides of the cards with Versafine Claire Nocturne ink. And now the card bases are done. So now I just need to adhere the card fronts. So I cut some doll pink cardstock to slightly larger than my card fronts just to mat it, bring out the fun pink and adhere those together with craft tacky glue. And the only reason I'm flipping everything over, like the these watercolors, none of the smears or anything, but my hands were just sweaty. I just, I had got a lot going on and when I'm, I was trying to do this and I was like, oh, I don't want to smear things because my hands are just, I'm just a mess right now. But anyway, <laughs> so that's the only reason I flipped it over. These don't smear like at all. Even with my sweaty hands, they still didn't smear. So just FYI, but I was being particular because I didn't want to ruin anything right at the very end, of course. So I adhered those together. I adhered the sentiments on an angle, which again, for me is, I just don't think this way. Like I try to make everything straight, but I was like, wait a minute, these look great on an angle. So that's what I did. And then I adhered them to their card bases. Again, just flip them over just to be safe, you know, cause yeah, sweaty hands are the worst. Anywho, here <laughs> those are the card bases. And then I'm gonna pair these with some, I think they're called Blue Lagoon, but they're the same color as the cardstock, the Island Blue cardstock. So I paired those with the Slimline envelopes and that finished off these super fun, bright cards. Um, FYI, this video is part of a blog hop for the Simon release. I will have a link to my blog post directly below the video and all the info about the hop and the giveaways and all that fun stuff on my blog. So you can check that out below if you're interested. Thank you all so much for watching, for subscribing, thumbs up and commenting, all of it. I very much appreciate all of you and I will see you all very soon in the next video. Bye.